Hey folks, Marcus here again from the Ashton Fly Shop. Welcome back to another episode of Beginning Spay Tactics. We're going to talk a little bit about reading water for steelhead and really the top three things that I think about in reading water is depth, speed, and structure. Um, if you can get kind of the sweet spot of those three variables in any given steelhead river, you can start to pick apart all the spots that you're presented with and you can become a more efficient angler on the water. So we're out here, we have a fairly good size run that's got a steady current that's pushing down the middle of the river. You can see up past the raft, that current is really aggressive down the center line of the river. And then as we go past the raft, past where I'm standing and down river, that that current evens out and flattens out and the, the force of the water spreads out throughout the width of the river. So when I'm talking about reading water, a lot of what I think about, especially this time of year, is holding water for steelhead. And we're fishing upper river system. Our fish are a good distance from the ocean and they're not, they're obviously still on a migration, but they're far enough river where they'll start to hold, start to slow down. And that's the water that I really focus on. Um, when I fish winter close to the coast or I go up to British Columbia, I often get thrown off fishing traveling lanes and traveling water because I've spent so much time focusing on upper river holding water situations. So that's the stuff that I want to break down is this holding water, how to read it, what to look for. And you can see where I'm at, I'm just a little bit above my ankles and a rod length away, it doesn't get much deeper. Two rod lengths away, it starts to get about twice as deep and then three rod lengths away, it would be deeper than waist deep. So what you can see here is I've got a shallow inside gravel bar. When seen from above, this river has a shallow bar on the inside and then a deep wedge on the outside. For holding fish, I would typically position myself in a place where I'm in a comfortable wading spot but still have access to that deep water because steelhead, they need depth to hold and you know, they need, it's all relative, right? They need that, I often think of three to six, seven, eight feet. That's that's the sweet spot. You can hook, you can hook fish shallower, of course, and you can hook fish deeper. But that three to seven, eight feet um, is kind of a really sweet spot, especially in a run like this, when on the far side you get that depth, but the water isn't just cooking on through there. It's got, it's slow enough to present a swung fly in, and. It's tough when we're on the surface, you know, we're, we're out here, we're looking at the river and we're on, we're just looking at the surface of the water. And the surface tells you a couple important things. It, it tells you a lot about speed. Looking up there, I can tell that the head of the run is a lot quicker right down the middle. In this section of the run, looking at the surface, I can tell that the water's faster on the, har on the far bank than it is on my near bank. But what that doesn't tell you, doesn't tell you depth, number one, and, and the big thing is it doesn't tell you structure. And sometimes you don't get the opportunity to float over a run or you can't see a run from above. And if the, rock, if the water is like over the boulder level, then you might not be able to see the structure in there. But when I think about holding water for steelhead, that's big thing that I think about is having some structure. So rocks that are, you know, soccer ball, basketball size and bigger up to car size or house size. Um, 
is really going to be the stuff that holds steelhead. They'll come, they'll come up and they'll use that broken current around the structure to hang around. So when I look at this run, what I feel is that the inside third is probably not going to be very productive. Um, you might hook a fish there, but I would guess that you're actually hooking them because they saw it somewhere on the far side or in the middle and they tracked with it and ate it on the inside. This ankle deep, knee deep water, I just do not have a lot of confidence swinging. When I look at a run like this, I look at where the color changes and where you see that color change and it starts to deepen out into a, you know, kind of that green water is really where I start to focus. So I would position myself where I can wade out, cover the green water and just swing into that color change. And that's something I really think about. A lot of the runs that I focus on and love, they have a depth that's conducive to holding fish, a speed that makes it really enjoyable to swing a fly, and then they've got bouldery structure down in there. So you can't, when you're in the beginning, you don't always get the opportunity to float over water to see what the bottom looks like. And you have to use those first two variables, the depth and the speed. And sometimes if you can't see the structure in there, you just have to, you know, kind of guess at what is under there. But those are three things that I think about in my fishing. And I'd encourage you as you get to get into this sport, you might head to a new river, new region. Taking those variables, depth, speed, and structure will, will really help you break apart the vast amount of swing water that we have available to us and make your time on the water more efficient. So thank you very much for tuning in.